For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson, asking you as usual to subscribe on YouTube and on Rumble just in case, and to sign up for the free newsletter just in case, as in, in case we need to reach you because we got deplatformed for saying that CO2 might not drive temperature. Yes, I know, a lot of people say, hey, it's way too late to debate this claim, especially in the policy arena. They say the fossil fuel industry should rally around the white flag, admit their product destroys the planet, then ask for permission to send it through pipelines anyway, and look stunned on cue when the answer is, no, you mad fools, yet again. But here's the weird thing. There's actually very little evidence that CO2 drives temperature. And before you say, oh, good grief, that ship has sailed, we know rising CO2 correlates with rising temperatures. Have you checked? Because this week, we look at a YouTube video by Philosophical Investigator that actually used a computer to test the hypothesis by looking for times when they both rose and times when they didn't move together. And guess what? The nays have it, overwhelmingly. Even after 1750, CO2 and temperature moved together only 15% of the time. And while the 20th century is only slightly better, there are other times in the recent past. Yes, indeed. And the video goes back past Henry Ford and even Adam Smith to say that from at least 4800 BC and perhaps earlier, CO2 was rising and temperature was drifting down. Then after 1750, you start to get what we think are industrial revolution driven increases in CO2, but temperature keeps falling. After 1850, CO2 rises even faster and temperature falls. That's right, not until 1930 do they start moving together and then only for 14 years. After that, CO2 keeps rising, but temperature doesn't until 1980. From 1981 to 2000, they do both rise, and so does global warming alarmism, but then temperature stalls again till 2012, and then it rises again. Get the idea? Now, the earlier stuff is reliant on proxies, and it's not very precise. For that matter, even today's temperature records are less precise than people think. But on any scale that you look at, except the tiniest and most recent, you just don't find a relationship, unless it's that CO2 causes cooling. You see, it's actually remarkable how weak the evidence is for the orthodoxy and how strong the belief in it. Which is just as well because Climate Home News, which recently blurted out that neither the world nor its constituent parts are going to meet their Paris Agreement targets, has now banged its head on China's actual energy policy and reeled back stunned. But then it regained its balance and said it's all our fault. We're setting a bad example and poor old Xi Jinping just follows along the way he always does when we, I don't know, hold elections, respect due process, or clean our air. Now, speaking of evidence, there's been another outbreak of Miami is going under. For some reason, people claim the rising seas are about to engulf this Florida city, but as a new paper shows, sea levels aren't rising faster and faster, at least not in the United Kingdom. They were, but that was 120 years ago. Then it settled down, and it hasn't speeded up. And if it's not speeding up on one side of the Atlantic, it probably isn't on the other either. Still on the subject of evidence, we've complained that after the ice storm hit Texas, Alarma said, yes, of course, we told you warming means cooling, told you so. But now Willis Eschenbach points out that if the world is meant to cool as it warms, something's wrong with Houston, Dallas, and Oklahoma City at any rate, because they're not cooling. So what was the prediction again? Seems to depend on what just happened. In the newsletter, we also raise another theoretical question about CO2. You know, people who are skeptical of the apocalyptic vision of warming often point out that it got down to a hair-raising 180 parts per million or so in the last glaciation, maybe the previous one as well, and the reason that's hair-raising is that if it had fallen by another 30 parts per million, most plants would have died. The you know, reply, well, if it goes higher, they'll die anyway. But if the accepted picture of atmospheric CO2 based on proxies is anything close to correct, we'd like to interrupt that brawl briefly to start a new one by saying, look, CO2 seems to have fluctuated between about 180 and 280 parts per million over the last 800,000 years, and we want to know why. We want to know what was driving it, because if the settled science we keep hearing about can't explain what CO2 does without human influence, it's pretty unlikely that it could say what it does with it. On a completely different note, we note that Bloomberg wants to raise carbon prices sixfold, so apparently this new green economy won't be so painless after all. And in our Scientists Say series, we note that the claim that climate change means more extreme rainfall, flooding and so on, isn't exactly what scientists say. 
In 2012, the IPCC did say, quote, it is likely that there have been statistically significant increases in the number of heavy precipitation events, end quote. And if that's all we quoted, you'd think, okay, scientists have long been warning that global warming means heavier rain and worsening storms. But the original sentence continues, quote, in more regions than there have been statistically significant decreases, but there are strong regional and sub-regional variations in the trends, end quote. So what you see is a complicated picture with fluctuations, not a clear trend, scientists say. We also have two items from our friends at CO2Science.org, one about the impact of rising CO2 on plant water use efficiency, or WUE, which as usual finds that it increases it, and another saying that most studies of how sea creatures and plants respond to acidification rely on artificial lab conditions where CO2 doesn't fluctuate, which it definitely does do out there in the water world. And after all, science is meant to be about what happens out there in the world. Again, if you find our work useful, please forward it to friends and colleagues, subscribe to the newsletter and YouTube and Rumble if you haven't already, do the Twitter Facebook thing, and send us money. For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson, and I have serious doubts about the standard story on CO2.